Right, this is the top five SUVs from the 2019 Geneva Motor Show, and we start with something, you know, everyday, mundane, run of the mill, affordable. Only joking, it's none of that. It's the new Aston Martin Lagonda all-terrain concept. Basically, what is it? It's the SUV Lagonda. This time last year, we saw the Lagonda Vision concept. That was a super, uh, super-sized luxury all-electric saloon. This is an SUV take on that same formula, but this will be the car that launches first when the Lagonda brand truly launches in 2022. This will be the first car that they put into production. All electric, autonomous functions, high, high-end luxury. I tell you what, before we move around the side, just cast your camera down the side of this car. Look how long this is. They say the styling is inspired by high-end super yachts, and I don't doubt them for a second. Look at the booty on that. It is more like a boat than a car, but then the people that will be buying these cars, well, they'll probably own several super yachts at the same time. Okay, but the really exciting stuff, as you'd expect with an uber luxury car like this, happens on the inside, so I'll just point some of it out. We've got this screen in the center of the steering wheel which frees up the rest of the dash to be as sparse as possible. You'll notice these rotating dials in the front and in the back. I have no idea what they do, but they look fantastic on a show car, don't they? It's all about luxury, this car. You can see these sort of first-class airliner reclining seats in the back covered in some sort of... No, no, that's fake fur. That's fake fur. Don't worry about that. Um, I'm told these seats can rotate, so it's got autonomous functions, this car. These can spin around, so you can have a four-way conversation with your... Uh, with your passengers in the back while the car drives itself to your destination. In terms of spec, well, it is a concept car. It's three years out from production. They're not gonna give us exact numbers on this thing. But I remember from the Vision concept, they were talking about solid state batteries. They were talking about a 400 mile range. And of course, pretty punchy performance, as you'd expect for a car that's taken on brands like Bentley, like Rolls Royce. But the brave thing here is they're doing it in a completely different way to anyone else. You have to hand it to Aston. Brave, brave move. <laughs> Welcome to the Cupra stand, not the Seat stand. You get in trouble for saying that. This is the Cupra stand because Cupra now, of course, has been spun off. It's a completely separate brand. Although Seat is just over there, but let's not get into that now. So what is this? This is their all new car. We've, until now we've had the Ateca Cupra, the go faster 300 horsepower family SUV. This, you may have noticed, is another fast SUV, but it is an all new model exclusive to the Cupra brand. It's called the Formentor, not the Fermenter. That's something to do with homebrew. What is it? Well, it hasn't got the two litre turbo engine like the Ateca Cupra. This is a plug-in hybrid, so it'll do 30 odd miles on EV power alone or 242 horsepower when you combine the electric motors and the batteries with the petrol engine. So quick, but not that quick. This is Cupra then moving into the mainstream but maintaining their sporty edge with the styling because it is quite a sharp, quite an aggressive thing to look at. I quite like it to be honest. Ladies and gentlemen, we are witnessing the birth of a new brand. Meanwhile on the Volkswagen stand, the hot hatch appears to be evolving into something that's, well, slightly worrying if we're honest. This is the T-Rock R, another super fast, super mini, type SUV, bit like the Audi SQ2, a sister car to that. Um, basically a Golf R and drag, so you've got a two litre turbo, 296 horsepower under there, four wheel drive, seven speed DSG. It's bloody fast, 0 to 62 in 4.9 seconds. Speed isn't the problem here, and you can have an Akrapovic exhaust as an option if you really want to piss off your neighbors. No, the problem here is does the world really need a hot SUV like this? I don't think it does. What on earth is wrong with the Golf R? Right then, the Bentley Bentayga Speed, because what the Bentayga really needed was more speed. But there is quite an interesting point with this car. Um, top speed, 190 miles an hour. So that makes it currently the world's fastest production SUV. And more interestingly is who it pipped to get that slot, uh, the Lamborghini Urus, which translates to 189.5 miles an hour top speed. So this is a little bit of inter VW group willy waving and the Bentley wins. Uh, in terms of power, well, it's still got the six litre W12 twin turbo engine, 626 horsepower, 0 to 62 in 3.9 seconds. 
firmer suspension, a bit of a snarlier exhaust out the back, but the carbon ceramic brakes are still optional. You don't get those included, which is a bit silly because when you've got a 190 mile an hour car like this, roughly the size of a medium shop, well, carbon ceramic brakes are probably quite useful. Who'd have thought it's one of those rare, rare gems at a motor show, an actual surprise. Didn't think Alfa were bringing along anything new, but here is the Alfa Romeo toenail, or tonale. My Italian's never been very good. I know what it is though, it's a small SUV. It's an SUV, a more compact one to sit below the Stelvio. Um, simple as that really. It's probably gonna be based on the Jeep Renegade platform. Um, it's probably gonna go into production in the next two years. It's an obvious move for Alfa Romeo, a company that's expanding with the Julia Saloon and the new rear-wheel drive, four-wheel drive platform, the Stelvio, and then this. It's an Alfa Romeo, so it has to be beautiful. And tick, yep, it is. We've got the classic telephone dial wheels down there. We've got this beautiful, pure bodywork. You won't find any slashes or vents or any undue fussiness anywhere, just Italian elegance. The interior, yeah, that's a bit mad. It's got a sort of spider's web glowing red center console and, and various mad screens dotted around, but it's a concept car. We need a bit of razzmatazz for a motor show. It's part of a big expansion for Alfa Romeo. So as I said, there's gonna be an SUV below the Stelvio. There'll be an SUV above the Stelvio as well. There's also gonna be a coupe version of the Giulia called the GTV. That's gonna be a 600 horsepower hybrid to take on cars like the Mercedes C63 S. Um, and there's also going to be a revival of the 8C badge. Now that's going to be a twin turbo V6 mid-engined, or is it going to be V8? I don't know yet. It's mid-engined, it's got turbos, it's going to wear the 8C badge, and there's going to be a Super Girl once again in the Alfa Romeo range. Exciting times, but good to see that they haven't forgotten what they're best at, and that's making simple cars look beautiful. So that's it. That's our top five SUVs. If SUVs aren't your cup of tea, they're not your thing, well, I'm sorry to report that the trend is very much not dying out. There's more than ever and greater variety than we ever thought possible. Good way to end that.